welcome to Wise Inside, the workshop for today. We're so glad that you are joining us. And I have an amazing guest, Danielle Matthew. She is just a bright light on this planet and shining so bright for all of us, our kids in particular, but it also is for us as adults. And we're talking about redefining bullying today. We're going to have two episodes. So this is the first episode where we actually dive into what is bullying, what is it look like? How do we see the signs? What's actually the real definition of bullying? And then our second segment, which will be right after this one, is all about what can we do with bullying? What are some real tangible things that we can take home today to help our children that are experiencing bullying and even a child that is bullying that we know that it's going on? How do we support both sides in this matter? So that's what I love about Danielle. This program that she created, The Empowerment Space, is all about empowering our children when they experience bullying, when they are actually going through it, giving them skills, coping skills, self-worth, self-esteem, self-value to support them in the space. Instead of pushing against anti-bullying, pushing against making sure that nobody ever bullies everybody again, it's gonna happen, it's happening now with adults. We are experiencing that in our country right now as we speak. So I don't believe that bullying will ever go away. What I do believe is, can we empower the people in that space that are being bullied so that they too can be the light that shines bright and eventually at some point in time, the possibility of bullying dissipating and actually going away. I believe that's the way to approach it just me. So welcome, Danielle. I'm so Thank excited. You, to be here. Can you tell everybody just a little bit about yourself if they haven't heard from you or um, just a little bit about who you are, how you came to this space and what the empowerment space is? So I'm a marriage family therapist and I've been in the business over 20 years working with children and families. And a couple of years ago, I had a, an assessment done around our community to see how many programs are around our community that really work at a crisis point of bullying with children. And I didn't find that there was a lot of resources available. So what I did is created the program, the empowerment space, and it's 10 <laughs> with three follow-up sessions and it really empowers kids to heal from bullying so essentially every week there's a new coping skill self-esteem skill that they learn and really learn what their body feels like when they're being bullied and role-playing and different ways of handling situations but we want kids to feel empowered to handle the bullying and heal from it and not have parents intervene because that ends up as studies have shown that it gets worse for kids and we have three follow-up studies um, one month, two months, and three months later, and we have the latest research that we are using to um, use skills for our kids in this program. That's so awesome. And you, you, the one key point that I, I heard just clear as day is doing our best to keep the parents out of the actual experience because it does make it worse. And we experience that a lot when parents get involved. Of It, it just amplifies the energy all the way across the board and as a child that was bullied all my life and you can read all about it in all my books because that's where I talk about it and pretty much everywhere um, but as a child that and, and an adult that I was bullied most of my life when when my my parents didn't necessarily step in for me in particular but when they got a phone call from the school it was embarrassing humiliating Uh, I just wanted to curl up in a ball. It was not helpful. And thank God my parents didn't run to the school or go to the neighbor, which was the bully, our neighbor in our neighborhood, and they knew very well, and knock on their door and say, why are you doing this to my kid? Or having their parents get involved. It just would have made it totally worse for me, (laughs) just from my own experience. Because when I was being bullied, I just wanted to curl up and disappear. Like, I don't want anybody to see me, (laughs) you know, and I started walking into rooms like, oh God, please just don't let them see me. Just please let them be, you know, involved in something else besides me. So I, I totally hear that. And, you know, I wanted to get a clear definition too, because you say such a beautiful way of describing bullying, because I think that over time we have be any experience that is negative or feels bad or is mean or ugly becomes 
you're a bully. Mm -hmm. And I love how you describe what bullying is. So let's set that, that foundation right now. What is bullying? So bullying is a repeated behavior that happens when someone has power over someone else. So the thing to remember and the takeaway is it's repeated. So it's not a, a, be a conflict between two kids. It happens once. That would be a conflict resolution situation. It has to be repeated one grade to the next where they really have power over this other person. And it must be constant that it's going on over and over again. That's usually how bullying manifests itself because it is good continuous thing that goes on yeah that when somebody just hits somebody or pushes somebody or yells at somebody that's not necessarily bullying right and I think we've kind of taken it a little bit overboard uh you know even my own experience when my son was two two years old we were in a chick-fil-a uh don't judge a Chick-fil-A uh, restaurant <laughs> and they had inside the play place, right? Okay. We don't do McDonald's, but we do do Chick-fil-A. Um, and he was playing and he pushed a little girl and the other mom mm -hmm. flipped out on him. I'm sitting right there. She flips out on him. She says, you're just being a bully. Why are you doing that to this little girl? And I just, I was looking at her and I was like, they're two. <laughs> they, right. Bullying is, doesn't exist at two. <laughs> Communication skills are lacking. You know, empathy is lacking. There's lots of things that are lacking in a two-year-old, but bullying is not one of those things, right? And so she literally kept saying over and over to my son, you, what, you want to grow up and be a wife beater? And I was like, what, what, what's going on here? Wow. I literally lost my mind because I yeah. couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I think that it's just a conditioning that we've all been through mm -hmm. that, oh, well, that's bullying. Oh, well, he's right. going to be a bully if he hits or, and your experience, I'm sure in my re experience reflects that, that kids, especially young children, you know, we're talking under five, under six, their, their experience is about experiencing, right? And mm -hmm. if people really knew, I mean, I owned a preschool for years. If people really knew how many times kids hit, yell, scream, bite, kick, mm -hmm. uh, say you're mean, ugly, I don't like you, I hate you, all of those terrible things as young children, I think people would lose their mind because it was all day, every day, somehow, some way. So um, I think it's just lack of experience of knowing that that's how kids actually work out a lot of things. And it's certainly, I'm not condoning it. Of course, I'm not like, yeah, fight it out, you know. <laughs> but there is a part where we give, we step in and give them the communication skills that they're looking for. That's right. And you make a really good point in saying this happened one time at a Chick-fil-A. So again, that's not necessarily bullying anyways. It might be, as we said, a conflict resolution between two kids. It wasn't happening every day over an older kid who really understands what they're doing. Um, and it was a one-time thing. Yeah, I think that that's really powerful because the fine line we walk is when we, when we end up labeling our children, ourselves, anybody, really, anything, we become that space, mm -hmm. right? Right. So we become a self-fulfilling prof prophecy, you know, like mm -hmm. by, by saying, well, you know, my kid's a bully. Then we start seeing and noticing everything, amplifying it into that space when it could be just, like you said, conflict resolution, lack of communication, I'm not understanding the circumstances. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. You know, I yeah. have to pee. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. It could be a lot of different things. And people interchange that word a lot. Even with older kids, they're being a bully and it's not necessarily bullying. I just wrote a, um, a blog about that. Is this really bullying? Because we really have to keep what the definition is in mind. Someone once said, well, if someone teases someone because they're a diabetic, is that bullying? And it would have to be a repeated pattern where they have do this constantly and they have power over this other person who's diabetic. And again, it's not necessarily just a one-time thing that happens. Not that that's okay. Either way, I'm not condoning it, but it is really about it being a one-time thing that may not be necessarily a bullying behavior. Well, and I think to your point of it's it, yeah. in that moment, of course, that's our job as adults is to step in and say, you know what, that's not who you are, right? Like, right. 
you're a really amazing kid and I know you wouldn't purposely hurt his feelings. I know that about you. And even if you don't know that about them, we're going to hold space that we do know that about them. Right. <laughs> you know, right. That we're holding them in a higher space than that which they're holding themselves in that moment. Exactly. And so I think that that's really powerful when we can also, as adults, change that experience for ourselves, right? That in our minds we go, because in the moment, even knowing what I know, working with 30,000 kids, 25 years, yeah. I sat there and I was like, oh, what if he is a boy? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know? And I had like 10 <laughs> seconds of that thought. And I was like, oh, you know better, you know better, knock this off. Like, but for those of, for those of us that don't have the experience of working with sure, our kids, of course. you've never been around a kid in your life. You never babysat. You never have been around a kid and you're like, oh man, is this what this is? So I'm really glad you bring clarity to that in, in a way that feels really good because we need that we need that amplifying out into the world that clarity because it's it's become this label as ADHD in my opinion AD you know all of the things that we label our children because of an experience that we're having and again I'm not saying that ADD doesn't exist what I'm saying is that oftentimes when we label in that space it just amplifies and we start noticing it right mm -hmm. you know like when when I feel like, oh God, I've gained weight. And then all of a sudden nothing fits. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. Like everything I try on isn't look right. Doesn't feel right. Instead of like, oh, you know, I'm going to try this on and it's going to feel good. It, just changing our mindset with that. So yep, I agree. Yeah. I think it's really powerful, really powerful. So if indeed you feel like you're child is experienced bullying, what are some of the signs that we can look for that help indicate that something might be going on? Well, the first one would be that they um, have physical uh, symptoms. So are they coming home with the back pack torn, not just one time, but continuously. Is there a black eye or are there bruises on their arms? Again, not one time, but if you're starting to see a pattern of this behavior, that would be one of the things for sure. Also, number two, a very big one that I think is one of the biggest is academic performance and seeing a decline in that. Have they been an A student for a long time and all of a sudden they're coming home with C's and D's on a regular basis? You want to understand what might be going on for them at school and what's happening and what's their experience of what's happening. And then you also want to look at, are they isolating more in their room? Are they actually someone who was really social, had friends over all the time, and now they're all by themselves in the room. They don't wish to come out. They don't wish to engage or be a part of activities. And that's another one that I would really be wondering about that would be the third and again a change in sleep or eating pattern is there a change in where they're sleeping and eating how were they really good voracious eaters and love to come in and help cooking in the kitchen and loved family time and now they've decided you know what i just want to be in my room they're not eating very much you're seeing a change loss of weight is another example you might want to again if you see this over time be worried about that as another um sign of bullying potentially. And then you really also want to look at a change in their social life. If they have less friends, are they not having the same amount of friends that they had before and people aren't coming over as regularly as they used to? That's really important as well. And I would say those are um, the signs. And one more that I do want to put in there is number six is a strong dislike for school. If they loved school before and they loved being there, right, and they loved their activities, and now they just decided they don't want to be there anymore. They hate school. They don't want to be involved in anything. Again, a pattern of this behavior. Yeah. And, you know, the pattern can go on for years, right? Yes. Like it's, yes, it, it can. I don't think it's necessarily just, oh, one day you notice, right? It, it can be a buildup for years. Exactly. It is about a buildup and a pattern can happen and it can stop for a while and then it can start again. So it's really, really important that we, when that happens, make sure that we have um, careful watch over it. It's not like a one-time thing where we're like, okay, I'm going to look at these six signs today. Oh, they're not there tomorrow. They could reappear. So it's always important as parents that we're just vigilant and aware that these things I, happen. I think that was the angels saying to us, that's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. Ding, yeah. 
<laughs> I think that's a really good point. So we need to hold that in our hearts because, you know, I, I think over time, everything changes, right? I know for me, it started in second grade when I started a new school. I was in the same homeroom with the same kid for, I don't even know how the school district did it, but he was in my same homeroom every single year. And every time I'd walk in there, I'd be like, oh, not again, not again. Right. And right. realized that he was just going to torture me. And so I'd have these moments to your point of, I'd be fine, I'd be rolling along. And especially in the summertime, or uh -huh. at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. you know, where yes. he hadn't kicked in full gear. <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. Until the school year starts. Right. And so, you know, I, I realized that, that it, it was kind of this ebb and flow. And for me in particular, even after we moved away from that school and that bully in particular, I had developed this, this what I call an energy of victimization, right? Like anytime I walked in a room, I was worried that somebody was going to make fun of me. And so consequently, somebody always made fun of me. <laughs> like, right, right, that, yeah. You absolutely. know, that's just, you know, it's like anything, right? You worry so much about getting in a car accident and then it happens. Or you worry so much about somebody not showing up and they don't show up because we put so much energy into that space. But what I will say is even moving into a whole new city, state, new school, I carried that energy with me. I got bullied again. Mm -hmm. And... I, I had some resources to escape it, but there was that point in time when I was, you know, sitting in my room before my junior year where I had a month before I could drive, and that was freedom to me, was to be able to drive so I didn't have to ride the bus. Mm -hmm. um, because on the bus, that's when it was the worst. It was like isolated, small, you know, I couldn't get away, there, <laughs> you're stuck. Um, and so what I... I started crying right before school started and my dad came in and I was embarrassed and humiliated because I didn't want to admit to my dad people were making fun of me because I was a fat kid and you know I was ridiculous and I was never gonna amount to anything because I was just fat and ugly um, and he's he saw the tears and really experienced it for me and he knew intuitively that this was not I was not playing him. I was not trying to manipulate him. This was real hardcore pain that had manifested over years. Mm -hmm. And to his, uh, 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 he just really the most amazing dad in that space. And I'll never forget that moment that he said to me, you know, he goes, what can I do to help you? What can I do to help you? Because he had no idea, like what, I can't lose the weight tomorrow. Like it's not going to happen. So what can I do to help you? Yeah. And um, I said, you know, can you just give me a ride for the first month and a half? You know, my birthday was in the middle of October. So it was a month and a half. So can you give me a ride to school and I'll find my way home? I just, I need a ride to school. I cannot get on that bus one more time. And he said, all right. And he was a night owl and staying up till three, four in the morning. And he got his silly butt up at 6 a.m. for a month and a half. He ended up working out before work, so it was a win-win for him too. And what I realized is, is that a lot of people say, well, you know, he was just just placating. See, I tell you, those angels are with us today. I know, this, I know. This is really important for people, and I think that those are guiding messages. You know, I always talk about signs, right? Like, they're it's signs true. in the universe, and they're always here. Some people, you know, see a feather or pick up a penny or hear a song. I'm telling you, this is powerful work that you're doing here on this planet, Daniel. <laughs> Like, I will leave it with all my heart. And I'll tell you, the, the angels are just dinging away because it's the truth. It's, it's really how, how do we help each other in this space? Not try and fix it for you or That's take right. it away. That's right. But how can I support you and help you in it? That's, your dad did a really lovely thing in the way he approached you. It was with love and openness and kindness and wanting to hear from you to empower you to make some of the decision about what was going to be best for you for Heather yes. and I respect the way he approached things with you. Cause that's what you want to do with your kids. And that's what you do in the program. 
Yes, yes, we're very open and we really are empowering the kids to solve the problems, to help them with their coping skills that they think are going to work best with ideas that we give them, but we don't tell them how to do it. We just give them skills and they have to go and approach it the best way they can. And we do practicing of role plays to really show all of that and how we're going to help them learn what to do with the kids in the moment when it happens. It's, it's powerful work. And we've got more to talk about. The next segment is going to be all about some takeaways that we can, you know, actually use in our home. And you have, it's called the three E's and I'll let you talk about that on the next segment, but Mm -hmm. these actual takeaways that we can use. And let's remind everybody what those angels were talking about today, you know, dinging in, in those moments that, you know, here's some signs that we can actually pay attention to and really know that, something's going on and I'll add to that and you support that in in conversations we had is that if you just feel that energy shift with your kid, like something's off and you just don't know what, um, you know, we all experience that as friends, right? I walk in the room and I'm like, what's going on? Something's off. And to sit with our kids and how can I help you? Like, that's the biggest, most beautiful question. That was the other ding too. So (laughs) <laughs> the perfect timing for that, right? The perfect timing. I'm telling you, there's signs everywhere. There's signs, and this is your sign for those of you watching that there is help, there is power. That we don't have to be a victim to our circumstances. That we can stand in our power, and we can attract the people into our lives, like Danielle and myself, to help support you in that space. Yes. So, Danielle, how can they find you? Real quick, um, um, how they can find you and and, and get more information on the empowerment space. Sure, they can go to my website, www.empowerment.space. On there is going to be my phone number, how to reach me, and more about the program. And there will also be some of my blogs, like the one we talked about today, The Signs of Bullying is on there, and Is This Really Bullying? So there's a reiteration of what we talked about today on there for you. Awesome. Awesome. And I will put those links into to this as well um, below. So... And for those of you that want to know more about Wise Inside, um, you can find me, of course, on wiseinside.com. There's so many tools to support you and resources to support you in anything that's going on in your life. And I just started empowerment sessions as well. Wise Inside empowerment sessions where if you're having any conflict or any issues that are going on, how do you circle back to that wisdom for yourself and actually empower yourself in that space? to experience love for yourself, your children, each other. So thank you so much, Danielle, for joining us. And we're going to join you again. And I will put the link to the next segment as well so that you can find it very easily. Thank you all so much. And remember that you are wise inside. You matter. And you have purpose on this planet. And we are here to support and love you and help you shine your light. So much love. Bye.